welcome to episode 160 of the Craft Heist Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 8th of April. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some crochet, some sewing, which is bra making to show you. I have a few questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and then a couple of things to announce in my shop update section. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I have my own website, crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher and clover crochet hooks and higher higher knitting needles as well as bag making supplies such as fabrics and wadding etc. So I'll leave links in the description bar down below to all the places where you can find me including my website and also the show notes are in the description bar down below as well. I've now recently added the chapters feature which allows you to sort of scroll along and see which bit each section is called at the bottom of the screen. So let's get on to the good stuff shall we? I have a finished object to show you which Liz has knitted for me. This is Adam's mum um, she's working through some of my stash for me on projects that I might not have got round to um, if I hadn't got her helping me knitting. So this is a cowl and this is a crazy sock lady pattern and it is called the round and round cowl and it's a really lovely pattern. It's got some really nice simple increases and decreases along the length of the cowl to make this wiggly pattern and I have got it knitted up in some lovely yarn from Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. It is the Newt Scamander colourway which I purchased um, quite a few years ago when I went to Florida and I got my order delivered to the hotel which is brilliant. So there we go. If I come a bit closer you can see those increases and decreases along the length of the pattern but it is a lovely simple pattern and it used about 70 grams of yarn um, and a finger in weight and I shall show you what it looks like on. So it's very reminiscent of Newt Scamander with the teal, orange and brown but I think that when it's knitted up to me there's more sort of brown in it than there is teal. It's weird how yarns can change slightly in which colours are more dominant once they're knitted up um, but it's a lovely pattern it sits really nicely around your neck quite nice and close and and Liz Adam's mum's quite a loose knitter as well so um, that's a lovely little addition to the knitted wardrobe. <laughs> so that's the finished object that I've got to show you. And I have given it a block um, and it's, it's come out really lovely and drapey. I love how blocking really brings the drape out in garments when they're made of merino anyway. So that's what I've got to show you that's finished but I do have a couple of works in progress. So I started a new project and it is a big worm. <laughs> Let me try and stretch this out so you can see what it looks like. It is the Honeycomb Shawl by Stephen West. Now it does tend to scooch up slightly when you're not opening it up. Um, once it's blocked I, that'll show up a bit better um, but you can catch, you can see what it's going to look like more or less. So the main colour I'm using is a turquoise colour you can actually see how long the cast on edge is here so that's doubled over so you start with the quite a wide side of the shawl and I've casted on um, the main colour is this turquoise and it's a collinette jitterbug yarn that I've had for years and it actually says when it was dyed up so I've had this pretty much since the date it says on it um, it says the 17th of April 2013 so it's been in my stash a few years and it's called Elephant's Daydream I think the colourway and it is a I think it's probably a sport weight yarn really because there are about 400 yards to 150 grams in this larger skein but I did weigh this before I started knitting with it and there was actually 160 grams here so it just works up that I've got just enough yardage um, to work up the rest of the shawl with this as the main colour and then I'm using minis that I have to sort of fade across the shawl um, we shall see how that goes. I have started actually, I've just started to incorporate a second mini um, 
the last two rounds just before this turquoise which you can't see is a lot different but there's slightly more bright pink patches in it than the one just down here and then I'm alternating skeins so that it sort of fades more effectively into each other although to be honest I've tried to pick the colours so that they do fade into each other anyway rather than just being rather than just going from one colour to the next if that makes sense but I'm going to knit pretty much um, and use up most of each mini and then I'll start alternating them into the next skein and hopefully use up most of each of the minis rather than having a lot to waste but hopefully you can get the gist of what it's going to look like so when you purchase the pattern so this is called the painting honeycomb shawl by Stephen West and there's a bigger honeycomb and a smaller honeycomb but actually you get both patterns when you purchase it and I chose the larger one because um, I quite like the larger honeycombs, the look of it, and also it was just the right amount to use this out of my stash. So I wanted to use some yarn out of my stash rather than dyeing up more or purchasing more. I have got quite a bit of stash and I'm hopefully not having things linger there for too many years and to actually use them and make them into something lovely. Now I'm not quite sure whether this is going to be sort of the colours that I'll wear out but this could be one of those really cosy shawls that I have when I'm sat in front of the telly wanting something really lovely and colourful and cheerful. I'm not going to show you all the minis that I've got planned uh, ahead of time, I'm just going to show you them as I knit them. These two um, are Nora George minis that I had in my stash, I pretty, I'm pretty sure they are anyway. They weren't ones that I've had labelled, but they've ones I've had in my stash for a couple of years and treasured them because I love these little pink pops of colour. And I've tried to pick the rest of the minis as well so that they contrast well with the turquoise with some other colours other than pink in there as well. So that's how I'm getting on with that project. But I have been working on my cosy memories blanket. Now I'm almost, I've got two more rows I think to finish this and then I'll start another one. <laughs> so this is basically, I'm including all my sort of minis but I'm trying to alternate them so that they're like a patchwork, like dark light, dark light, dark light, so that they're more or less sort of a balanced scheme of colours but I am incorporating all the different colours in there and I've actually managed to do an entire 12 squares since the last time I showed it to you. There aren't an awful lot but I can tell you what they are because they are just out of my stash. Um, see if I can remember. Oh this one is, so this one is a mothy in the squid colourway and I think it's called raspberry something like that um but that one at least i know what it is i think this one here is a peggy may yarns i've got two yarns that i dyed very early in my dyeing sort of practices next to each other there some little samples left over oh this one here is left over from my top that i knitted last week and this one is equinox in a stranded dye works um yarn and last but not least, this is Mr and Mrs Rabbit and it's one of the Valeria minis set that I bought. So there we go, we have a whole row finished. Ta-da! <laughs> so it's quite wide from this end, so that's where I started. And it's 12 rows deep like that so that me and Adam can pop it over our knees on the sofa together. So I did plan on doing the chevrons so that they go, the chevrons go that way for seven rows and then seven rows up, seven rows down, um, but then I've only got one, two, three, four, five, five rows going this way so I was just going to do two more rows going downwards and then I did um, plan previously to have the chevrons go up again but I think it's going to be too wide so I think I'm just going to do two more rows on that and do some I-cord edging on it but we're getting there slowly. I do find with this one that when I'm sometimes knitting on it at night when the light isn't very good that the colours don't look so nice but actually in the day I quite enjoy picking it up and having a look at it even though it's like a random mix of colours it is quite a pleasure to pick up and think oh that was that yarn from whoever so lovely. So that's my cosy memories blanket. So the next section I've got to chat to you about is crochet and I've picked up my hearts 
that I'd started and finish them off in a lovely bunting shape. So that's going to go up um, in February or my, maybe I'll put them up beforehand because they're so cute. I think it's a really lovely pattern. So the pattern is from lovely Sandra from Cherry Heart and it's a free pattern and then you can crochet these little hearts and then it does give you instructions of how to join them together to make a little length of bunting which I think is rather lovely. Most of these yarns are Valeria colourway from Mr and Mrs Rabbit yarns which was a set of minis but then I've also picked out a few pink minis out of my stash as well um, to go with them. So those are going to go up in the craft room somewhere I think for now and then I think on Valentine's Day I'll make sure it's in the background of the podcast so it's very sort of February <laughs> I need to start another crochet project I think after this I have got another one of Sandra's uh, crochet patterns in mind but I haven't quite decided on what colorways to do it in yet so we shall have to see I have to have another dig in the stash I think so now is the sewing section or the bra making bit so I've been working on another bra. <laughs> so I basically got the pattern from an existing bra that I owned because I just absolutely love the fit. So I spent ages working out, trying to ha make pattern pieces from the original bra. And this is my third or maybe second version. No, it is the second one, I think. This is my second version from those pattern pieces which I've slightly modified because it's obviously not quite the same as the original. And this isn't quite there as well, but it is getting there slowly. So from the previous version, I reduced the length of the back bands around the body because that was a little bit large. And then it was a little bit gapy on the top of the cups. So I, so I reduced the, the length of the top seam up here. Um, and there was one or two other little changes that I made but it's still not quite right so I'm going to for the next time I'm going to reduce the length of the bridge by half an inch because I think that that is twisting the shape of the cup upwards and changing the shape of the cup slightly compared to the original um, that I was trying to copy so I'll remove half an inch from the end, the, the bridge and that will sort of twist the cup around and hopefully make it fit a little bit better because there's a part of the bust where I still feel as if there isn't much enough room and I think if I twist the cup like that it'll work slightly better. I use some non-stretch lace and some cup lining um, for the whole of the cup. I use two different cup linings for the, the very top panel compared to the other th three panels at the bottom just because it makes it a little bit more transparent at the top but I thought that the one I used for the bottom was a little bit more sturdy I've obviously done that both sides and I've just basically copied the way the straps worked on the original bra but I am thinking of once I've sorted the fit of this bra I might see if I can get some wider strapping or strapping that actually has a portion that's slightly wider at the top or you can actually sort of make some of your own um, using material rather than having the strapping going right over your shoulder um, but I'm not going to bother showing you on Barbara because it pretty much looks the same as last week's version because it's all in black as well but I thought that if I had the cup liner the power net and everything I might as well buy all the same color and then I can keep churning them out till I get one that's perfect obviously I'll want to make several more then but um, it's just easier to have a load of black lace and black everything to go together until I get the right finished project so there we go hopefully one or two more versions of this bra and I'll have it the perfect pattern we shall see <laughs> oh dear so I've got a few questions from the ask me anything thread so if you're not on Ravelry and you don't use the Ravelry threads um, for chatting or anything if you drop me an email on crafthousemagic at gmail.com you'll be able to enter your ask me anything questions as well so we have a question from Peggy and this is quite a long question so I'm gonna so I'm gonna try and make it as brief as possible the answer she says that I've got so many crafts when where do I did I learn them all so very briefly in a nutshell um, I started with cross stitch and sewing first I think when I was really young and I was taught by my aunties 
and my mum as well not that she was very skilled in lots of different things but she knew the sort of basics that she helped pass on to me and my aunties were really good dressmakers so I learned a few things off them I do regret that I didn't learn more of them when I was younger to be honest um, but it was lovely to have relatives that were really into making things I very first learnt to knit with my mum. She taught me when I was about seven, I think. I wouldn't say my mum is very skilled at knitting, to be honest. She's very nervous about anything other than knit and purl. Um, so, but once I get her started, she's absolutely fine. She can do it, she just doesn't want to, I think. <laughs> but she taught me to start with, and then I've increased my skills by um, basically learning stuff from patterns that I'm having a go at, looking things up on the internet, video tutorials and things like that. I learnt to crochet off the internet as well completely, nobody taught me how to do it, I just had to watch a load of videos and it it, it gets there eventually. <laughs> um, with all the YouTube videos these days there's so many ways, um, there's so many videos out there to pick up new things, it's, it's ideal. I don't know how we learnt, what did we do before YouTube? <laughs> I learned to spin actually at a class because I thought, I think spinning is quite a difficult thing to pick up without being taught to start with at least. So I went to a full day class at Norfolk Yarn and I fell in love with it so I literally ordered a spinning wheel the day after I come off this class. <laughs> Um, and then I, I joined a local spinning and weaving group which I learned more about spinning there as well. And it was the Worsted Guild of Spinners, Weavers and Dyers. I've also been at a course for spinning at Wingham Woolwork as well, which I thought was really useful. Um, I think I've, uh, for a while, I could never get it as neat as I wanted it to be. It, and uh, she really helped me, Ruth, the lady from Wingham Woolwork, who taught the lesson, she really helped me to sort of hone the balancing of the yarn and things like that. I also picked up things like weaving from the, the Worsted Guild of Spinners, Weavers and Dyers once I'd learnt, once I joined there for spinning I learnt how to weave and things as well which I really enjoy and I also used to be a member of another local bobbin lace group as well but I don't go to anymore because it was quite a way for me to drive uh, it was about 20 miles from my house so I stopped going there as well but I picked up enough I think to be able to read from books then learn a bit more but to start with bobbin lace is really hard to learn just from books so it was handy to have a class to go to so most of the time it's picking things up from the internet I think once you've got got to start by going to a class or something or a local community group um, it's it's nice to be able to pick other things up off the internet so I, I've got a second question from Jo and she says for a non-sewer who wants to start dressmaking do I suggest a pattern and a fabric to put together first? Now I was thinking about this for a while and I've always thought like um, maybe like a t-shirt pattern in a woven pattern but I think actually the easiest thing to start with is a skirt where you only really have to fit the waist seam and I probably think that the easiest skirt that I've ever sort of tried um, and that it's easiest to fit is the Miette skirt by Tilly and the Buttons because it's a wrap skirt so therefore if you've measured a little bit incorrectly around the waist it's still going to be fine um, you've got that little bit of leeway with it being a wrap skirt and also if you did it in like a lightweight chambray it's pretty easy to sew that type of material as well it's not too thick it's nice and stable and it's a good way to start with not without having to worry about having to measure different things whether, whether whether you need to worry about doing um, so if you were making a top you might need to worry about doing a bust adjustment um, and different things like that so with a skirt you only really have to measure the waist and with it being a-lined normally because it's going out you don't have to worry too much about it fitting the hips so um, that's I think that's a good tip so Miet skirt by Tilly and the buttons I'll leave links in the description bar down below so a chambray is a, a type of woven cotton fabric which is it looks a little bit like denim but it's lighter weight so the last question I've got on the ask me anything thread is from Samantha and she was asking about a palette cleanser and that a lot of people tend to do a palette cleanser to use up yarn um, after they've done a project 
So what I understand it as a palette cleanser is something that is a, a simpler project, which is mainly the enjoyment is coming from using different bits of lovely yarn rather than having to concentrate on the project. So that's what I'd consider a palette cleanser, so that you don't have to really concentrate on something. Something that's not very complicated and nice and simple so that you're then ready for the next challenge. So last of all, I've got my shop update. So the April clubs have all been sold and I'm going to be shipping those on the 16th of April. But the next clubs, the May yarn clubs, will be open on the 23rd of April until the 7th of May and they will be shipped on the 21st of May. So that was the May yarn clubs. And a couple of people were asking me what is the yarn club. Basically, I've got two yarn clubs for this year. Um, so for each month from January to September, I'm doing a sock club, which is inspired by music from the movies. So I'll pick a movie in a song and dye some yarn according to that. So it'll be a surprise each month. And I'm also doing a mixtape mini set. So it's a mini set that all the colours coordinate nicely together and that they're inspired by some songs that you might find on a mixtape. So they're basically all my favourite songs on little mini mixtapes. <laughs> but I do plan it so that the minis in one set go together nicely. One last thing I wanted to mention is that I will be having some new bags in the shop on the 30th of April as well. But that's all I've got to t tell you about in my shop update. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you next week. Bye!